How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to the motherland. Today, we're diving into something super important, clean drinking water after a disaster. When everything goes sideways, whether it's a natural disaster or something man-made, one of the first things to get hit is our water supply. And water isn't just nice to have, it's literally life. Our bodies are like water sponges. We gotta have water to keep our cells pumping. Normally, you can only go about three days without water before things get real dicey. For this reason, we came up with 14 solid ways to make sure your water is safe to drink, spread across eight different categories. From old school boiling to high tech UV light purification, we're covering all the bases. Let's get started. Mechanical filtration. When you think about cleaning your drinking water, mechanical filtration is like the first line of defense. It's all about straining out the bad stuff without needing fancy gadgets or chemicals. Let's break it down into three key types you can use, especially after a disaster strikes. Number 14. Cloth filtration. Starting with the basics, cloth filtration is as simple as it gets. Grab a clean piece of cloth, maybe a bandana or a t-shirt, and use it to filter your water. It's about removing the visible gunk and some of the larger particles that you definitely don't want to be drinking. The effectiveness? Well, it's not going to catch everything, especially the tiny harmful microorganisms, but it's a solid first step. The limitations are pretty clear. This method alone won't make your water safe from bacteria or viruses, but it's a good prep before using more thorough purification methods. Number 13. Natural Filtration Moving up a notch, natural filtration uses elements like sand, charcoal, and rocks. Picture building a mini-layered filter. Rocks at the bottom, then sand, and a layer of activated charcoal if you can get it. Water trickles down through these layers, getting cleaner as it goes. The sand and rocks catch larger particles, while charcoal does a bang-up job of improving taste and snagging some chemicals. The benefits are solid. You're using natural materials to get cleaner water. The drawbacks? It's still not foolproof against all viruses and bacteria, and setting up a good system takes a bit more effort and knowledge about proper layering. Number 12. Ceramic filters. Ceramic filters are where things get a bit more high-tech. These filters have tiny pores that water passes through, leaving nasties like bacteria and protozoa behind. Many ceramic filters are also treated with silver, which acts as a natural disinfectant, killing or inhibiting the growth of microbes. They're super effective against a wide range of pathogens and can be cleaned and reused multiple times. Maintenance is key here. You'll need to clean the filter regularly to keep it working well, and eventually it might need to be replaced. But for long-term use, especially in a post-disaster scenario, a ceramic filter can be a reliable choice for safer drinking water. Solar Disinfection Methods Harnessing the power of the sun. Solar disinfection methods are a game changer for purifying water, especially when you're out of options. Let's look at two ways the sun can help make your water drinkable again. Number 11. Sodis Sodis, or solar water disinfection, is pretty much as straightforward as it sounds. You need clear PET bottles and sunlight, that's it. Fill the bottles with water, cap them, and place them under direct sunlight for at least six hours on a sunny day, or two days if it's overcast. The UV rays from the sun kill bacteria, viruses, and parasites, making the water safe to drink. It's effective, easy to do, and costs nothing. The only catch? It doesn't work as well if the water is very cloudy or colored, so you might need to filter it first to remove any debris or sediments. Number 10. Solar Stills Building a solar still takes a bit more effort but can be incredibly effective. You're creating a mini greenhouse where water evaporates from a contaminated source, condenses on a clear surface, and then drips into a clean container. This process removes salts, heavy metals, and pathogens, making it a powerhouse for purification. You'll need some plastic sheeting, a container to catch the water, and of course, sunlight. The setup might take some tinkering, but once you've got it, a solar still can provide a continuous supply of clean water. It's an ingenious way to leverage the natural cycle of evaporation and condensation, 
using the sun's energy to do the heavy lifting. Number 9. Boiling Boiling water is one of those tried and true methods that's about as simple as it gets. You take your water, heat it up until it's rolling with bubbles, and keep it at that boil for about a minute. This process is like a universal disinfectant, knocking out bacteria, viruses, and parasites, making sure they won't be a threat to you. It's a method that stood the test of time, and for good reason. No matter where you are, if you've got a heat source and a pot, you can make your water safe to drink. But here's the thing about boiling. It needs fuel. Whether you're using a camp stove, a fire, or an electric stove, you've got to have a way to get that water hot. And depending on your situation, finding enough fuel to boil water regularly can be a challenge. It's also worth noting that while boiling is fantastic for getting rid of living nasties in your water, it doesn't do anything about chemicals or metals that might be lurking there. So, if your water is contaminated with more than just microbes, you'll need to look into additional purification steps. Chemical Disinfection When you're in a pinch and need to make water safe to drink, reaching for chemical disinfection can be a real lifesaver. Let's break down three options for using chemicals to zap those harmful critters in your water. Number 8. Chemical Disinfection Tablets These tablets are compact, easy to carry, and straightforward to use, making them a go-to for hikers, campers, and emergency kits. You'll find mainly two types on the market, chlorine-based and iodine-based. Dropping a tablet into a specified amount of water, you wait the recommended time, usually about 30 minutes, before the water's safe to drink. They're super effective at killing bacteria and viruses, and because they're pre-measured, you're less likely to mess up the dosage. The downside? Some folks aren't fans of the slight chemical taste it can leave, especially with iodine. But when safety's on the line, a little taste is a small price to pay. Number 7. Bleach and Iodine Treatment For those who prefer to DIY their water purification, regular household bleach, unscented, please, and iodine can also do the trick. The key is getting the dosage right, about two drops of bleach per quart of water, or according to the iodine's instructions. Give it a good mix, then let it sit for about 30 minutes. These methods are highly effective against a wide range of pathogens. However, you've got to be careful with your measurements to avoid over- or underdosing. And similar to tablets, there might be a taste issue for some. Always double-check that your bleach doesn't have any added cleaners or scents, as these are not safe to consume. Number 6. UV Light Purification Diving into the techie side of water purification, UV light purification stands out for its effectiveness and simplicity. This method uses ultraviolet light to disrupt the DNA of microorganisms in your water, rendering them harmless. It's like flipping a switch to make water safe. No chemicals, no waiting for boiling water to cool down. However, the tech does come with a need for power. Most UV light purifiers are either battery operated or require a plug-in power source which means you'll need to have batteries on hand or a way to generate power, especially in off-grid situations. Some portable units can be charged via USB, making them a bit more versatile if you've got a solar charger or a portable power bank. The scope of what UV light can do is pretty impressive. It effectively takes care of bacteria, viruses, and protozoa, making it a powerful ally against a wide range of potential waterborne illnesses. One thing to note, though, is that UV purification works best on clear water. If you're dealing with cloudy or very dirty water, you'll want to filter it first to get the best results from UV light treatment. Advanced Filtration Technologies When you're looking to step up your water purification game, advanced filtration technologies offer some of the most effective solutions out there. Let's explore a couple of these high-tech heroes. Number 5. Microporous and Adsorptive Filtration Think of microporous filtration like a super fine sieve. Products like the LifeStraw use this technology to physically block pathogens, dirt, and other nasties from making it through to your drinking water. These filters have tiny holes, or pores, that are small enough to stop bacteria and protozoa in their tracks. Some go even further, 
incorporating adsorptive materials, think activated carbon, that also grab onto chemicals, improving both the safety and taste of the water. They're portable, easy to use, and require no power, making them ideal for individual use on the go. Whether you're hiking, camping, or preparing for emergencies, having one of these can make all the difference. Number 4. Biosand Filters Biosand filters are a bit more stationary but incredibly effective for long-term use. They combine mechanical filtration with a biological process to clean water. Here's how it works. Water passes through layers of sand and gravel, trapping particles and pathogens. Meanwhile, a biological layer forms on top of the sand, where beneficial microorganisms live. These good guys attack and break down pathogens as water filters through. Setting up a biosand filter takes some doing, and it's not exactly portable, but once it's running, it provides a reliable source of clean water for households. It's a fantastic option for anyone looking to purify water without constant input or maintenance. Chemical Treatment with Potential for re Growth Prevention When you're aiming for the gold standard in water purification, combining chemical treatments with technologies that prevent the RE, growth of nasties, is the way to go. Number 3. Reverse Osmosis Reverse osmosis only lets the smallest, purest water molecules through. This process pushes water through a semi permeable membrane, blocking contaminants including salts, bacteria, and viruses. However, RO systems require regular maintenance to keep performing at their best. Filters and membranes need cleaning or replacing to prevent clogging and degradation. For belt and suspenders safety, some folks pair RO with UV treatment, ensuring any microorganisms that might sneak through are neutralized, offering a one-two punch against impurities. Number 2. Activated Carbon Filters These are the best at removing chlorine, pesticides, and organic compounds, making your water not only safer but also more pleasant to drink. They're often used alongside other filtration methods like RO to catch the chemicals those systems might miss. The beauty of activated carbon filters lies in their simplicity and effectiveness, especially when it comes to making your water taste and smell better. Plus, they're a key player in a multi-stage purification setup, ensuring your water is as clean as it can get. Number 1. Distillation And finally, let's talk about the be-all and end-all of water purification. Distillation. It's like hitting the reset button, bringing water back to its most basic form. Here's the lowdown. You boil water, turning it into steam. Then you capture that steam and cool it down converting it back into liquid form. Pure water. This process leaves behind everything that was in the water. Bacteria, viruses, heavy metals, you name it. But here's the catch. It's resource intensive. You need a heat source to boil the water and a setup to condense the steam. It's not the quickest or easiest method, especially if resources are tight. But for purity, nothing comes close.